From the moment he started a trade war with China, President Donald Trump has made it clear that he wants the country to purchase more American goods, a lot more. But in a note to clients, analysts at Citigroup complicate that picture, saying that the even if China wanted to buy more of certain U.S. goods, the U.S. doesn't have the capacity or the will to sell them. Citing data from the International Trade Center, the analysts Dana Peterson and Catherine Mann wrote that the U.S. could send about $19 billion more of its soybeans and select meats to China, but that's about it. From the note, the U.S. likely can increase supplies of soy products to China in the short run, as well as select meats. However, meeting the proposed $1.2 trillion of additional shipments of goods to China over six years, including energy, machinery and tech products, will require major adjustments in the U.S. and China's current trading partners, as well as a reconfiguration of U.S. domestic production of these items. In some cases, the U.S. would even have to change national security protocols in order to trade goods China actually wants. The wish list problem One of the big problems here, and there are many, is that the U.S. and China don't have matching wish lists. The U.S. doesn't want to sell China all the things it wants, and China does not want or need the things that the U.S. wants to sell it, again, with the exception of soybeans. For example, the U.S. would like to sell China more aircraft, but China isnt interested. China wants more U.S. electronics, but the U.S. doesn't want to sell them. According to Peterson and Mann, China has the greatest demand for soybeans, smart cards, electronic integrated circuits, LED lamps, passenger cars, motor vehicle parts and accessories, large aircraft, pharmaceutical products, and other machinery. All these goods, aside from soybeans, come with their own complications. Some goods, such as electronics, e.g., smart cards and high-tech autos, the U.S. doesn't want to sell them for the sake of national security or intellectual property protection. China's theft of intellectual property has been a touchy issue. And then there's the fact that the U.S. is just maxed out in terms of production for some of these items. Citing data from the Federal Reserve, Peterson and Mann said that when it comes to foods, motor vehicles, semiconductors, and aerospace, the U.S. is at or near full production capacity utilization rates. In some cases, the U.S. would be able to satisfy only a small portion of China's demand. China wants $3.6 billion worth of mineral products such as liquefied natural gas, coal, and crude oil, but the U.S. has the capacity to send only about $100 million more of these goods. China wants about $1.4 billion in poultry, but the U.S. could satisfy only about $700 million of that, the bank said. So if the U.S. wanted to send more of these at our near-capacity goods to China, it would have to upset its friends. According to analysts, the U.S. could redirect $16 billion worth of large aircraft, $4 billion worth of tech, but again, there are intellectual property and national security concerns, $4.6 billion worth of components, and $7.30 worth of passenger cars. But to do that the U.S. would have to take away from allies such as South Korea, Canada, Mexico, Japan and the European Union.